SA Sports Show, SANFL big weekend. Massive. Footy coming up, and it's been a great Massive start of the season. Weekend. Monday is a ripper. Sturt up against Glenelg, so we thought, let's go to the top of the tree. Team undefeated this year, eight rounds in. Blues. Coach doing a great job. Joins us now, Marty Matna. How are you, mate? Very good. Good space to be when you're on top of the ladder, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is nice. <laughs> it has its challenges, but no, it is nice. Hey, mate, I did see, though, in saying that, the game on the weekend against Westies, you said uh, the best thing, uh, if the quote was right... Uh, that's all we can take from that game is that we won. Yeah, again, we didn't play well. well I guess, you know, play our brand of footy. But um, I think at the moment we're just, yeah, we're getting wins, which is good. Um, but we're still not quite playing our brand of footy for, you know, four quarters, which is a challenge in the group because you've got to keep winning, you've got to keep challenging the group. But, um, yeah, we, I guess we're looking forward to also just keep getting better each week as well. No easy games in the SNFL anymore, Marty, is there? I mean, you, you, all right, you got Westies. We can all say, oh, Westies, you know, the Sturt will take care of them. You're slightly off the beat. They'll, they'll get you. The, these teams will get you. Uh, you know, you're top. Yep. Westies, I don't know. I think Westies will be down the bottom somewhere. You know, three points. But you get away with a win. Uh, that, I suppose that's the big positive. But, gee, if you're off, you're, you're off slightly, you're gone. Yeah, and that's probably been with us the last couple of weeks. We've probably missed a quarter or two here. We haven't started well or whatever it is, but, you know, teams have come out and they'll kick three or four goals in a row and then you're the, on the back foot. So that is a positive from our group that we've been able to, you know, you know, keep teams to two or three goals in a row and then we've been able to grind back into the game. But it is hard when you're behind. Um, but the positive is, as we said, we've just been keep winning and find ways to win those games, which has been positive. I mean, we've caught up, mate, we've caught up with you a couple of times in the last couple of years and you were playing a lot of young kids and you, and you said we had to feel some pain and it's easy to say that now because you're winning, but through that process of giving the young kids the opportunity, getting them a chance to get where they are, how difficult for you with the frustration of, I need to do this to develop but I want to win? How, how do you find the balance in there? Yeah, it is a really hard balance and I, I guess you never know if you get it right, um, but we, I went and we got the job back at Sturt after leaving Adelaide. Um, you know, I, spoke, I sat down with the club and we talked about the, our junior program is very good and it's always been very good at Sturt. We have a great zone, the hills now um, and the city zone. So our development of our juniors has always been great. So we sort of thought well, like we've got a lot of kids coming through, we need to develop them. And I guess the idea was that what's our team going to look like in two or three years' time and who's going to play in, if we're playing finals and grand finals, who's that going to be? And we decided that we'd go down the path of, well, this player here, he needs, he, and they need sort of 40, 50, 60 games um, you know, in, under their belt to be able to be competitive and a good group of players. So, you know, we've been able to do that the last few years. Will Coombless, um, Casey Voss, um, you know, Tom Lewis, all now starting to have really big impacts in the Sandville. Um, all played state footy the other day as well. Um, but now we're starting to see, I guess, their development over the last two or three years, and now they're becoming really good footballers and also starting to be really good leaders at the club as well. Yeah, because you were fifth last year. I, mean, I think we can remember you saying that, you know, you're going to, this year's not going to be our year, but we're, you know, you haven't gone out and recruited big time. So you've, you, you've, you've sort of relied on what you're talking about is your zone, your area, your juniors coming up. Yeah. I think that's a great thing, really, without trying to buy one, if you like, yeah. go out and get five or six VFL players or whatever, you've actually done pretty well. You, a lot of those guys you're talking about now are in that bracket of 40, 50, yep. 50 games. And that's important, I think. Yeah, it's also like, I mean, we've got really good, our junior program is set up really well. We've got David Odie, one of the best minds, I think, mm. in junior football, coaching our 16s this year. Had Michael Higgs, who's actually gone to PAC now as well, and we've got Scott Preble in now yeah. as well. But it's always been a focus of the club is that development, because that's it's a very easy way to have a good list is your development of your younger players exactly in your right, zone. It yeah. doesn't cost you anything other mm. than, you know, the coaches at the start. But mm. And then we just add little pieces along the way. Um, mm. That's probably been our big thing mm. over the last few years is, you know, Conor McFadden we got in this year, we got um, Marty Frederick in, just to give us little yeah. different things. Like Marty gives us outside speed, mm. Conor gives us that really good key defender who can intercept and defend as well. So, mm. um, yeah, just, I guess, adding those pieces to the current group we've got. Um, yeah. We've also, you know, utilised, I guess, contacts, you know, Sydney Swans Academy. We've got three or three kids from Swans Academy the last few years as well. So yeah. just adding those little pieces to our core group of players that are locals or yep, Sturt yep. players has been really good. Mm. I mean, it's easy. Uh, I talked to some people on the weekend and there was comments made uh, in the paper about Sturt getting off to a slow start. And, uh, you, know, mm. I, you know, we had uh, Darren Reaver in before talking to him and they're down by 24 points and then they come back and win the game. So do, do people sometimes get seduced that, oh, you've started poorly 
and there's a big focus on that because you could, you could have the same start at the second or third quarter and you go on and win. So is it something that you're overly concerned about or more just aware of? Uh, no, I think it's an awareness thing. Um, you know, we talked to the group about, yeah, it, it helps if you start well. If you're even or ahead at quarter time, it makes the job a lot easier in the back end. But also, too, I think with, with us as third is, you know, because we're sitting top, clubs are going to come out and challenge us early. Um, mm. And they want to, you know, set the tone early in terms of the way they want to play. Um, and we've got to be ready for that. And we probably haven't been the last few weeks. Um, on the weekend, we did, and we didn't quite convert on the scoreboard. We were 1-3. I think Westies ended up being 4-1 or whatever at quarter time. So... Mm. Um, yeah, it's different challenges. Like we started well, but we didn't convert on the scoreboard. Um, the week before against South, we didn't start well at all. They kicked the first three goals in the first five minutes. So, um, little challenges, but um, yeah, it's just I guess yeah, we've got to keep building. And but it does make it harder when you're behind early. Yeah, we'll start well and lose the game. There'll be another criticism for that one. <laughs> so you can't win no matter what. Hey, oh, oh, big game coming against Glenelg. Yep. Always your first on ladder there, sitting in second. Both teams are playing some great footy. Um, your approach, nine day break for you as well, is it into the game? Yeah, it's been, um, it'll be nice. It'll be nice to have a little bit longer. We, we probably added an extra training session this week as well um, to the group. So both we will get the opportunity to freshen up because, um, again, like like they did, they have four or five in the state, state team as well. We haven't missed a game for a few weeks. So mm. um, that'll be great for our playing group. But also, too, we'll add another session at the back end of the week that we can just work on a couple of little things leading into the Glenelg game. So, um, yeah, again, getting that balance right between working on our game but also focus on Glenelg as well. Do you have someone going over a little Bo Peep at Glenelg? Um, Did you have someone there on the weekend when they played Adelaide? No. Okay. No. I mean, nowadays with the vision, we get both, you know, behind the goals and side on of every game. Okay. So, yeah. um, you know, me being full-time, I get to watch a fair bit of footy during the week. Um, mm. So, but we've played them in a trial game already this year, so you get a little bit of an idea about certain players, where they yeah. play and what they do there. Um, but, yeah, I'll watch a couple of games, you know, a quarter here of their game on the weekend, probably another quarter or a half of where else they yeah. played in the past um, to get an idea. But it's also probably a little bit about us as well. Um, there's yeah. areas that we need to keep improving on to get better, and exactly. we'll focus on that as well. Yeah. Mate, do you reckon you could put an hour a week, how many hours in a week you'd put into footy? You know, because you, you talk to people again and they go, they assume, oh, we train on Monday, we train on Wednesday, captain runs Friday, we play Saturday. And, you know, so Marty's out there for three hours on a Monday, yeah. three on a Wednesday. Yeah hour and a half on Friday, so well, about <laughs> 10 hours. It's not really that much for full-time job. What is it really? Um, I tell my wife, if my wife says it's probably too much. Oh, um, she'll definitely say that. She'll yeah. definitely say that. But I know, I love it. Um, I don't know, you'd probably be, you'd be up around the 40 to 50 hours a week. So that, um, that's what you put on it. And then there's the thinking, you know, you're driving yeah, your car going yeah. somewhere. And that's yeah. the part, when I talk to coaches, that gets lost with people. So yeah. it's not like, oh, we shut the book now and I go and do something. Even when you're playing with your kids, you're trying to, Switch it off, but it won't switch. Exactly. Go, yeah, I remember I want to do that against Glenelg this week. Yeah. Like cover off on that. So, well, I reckon the AFL coaches are somewhere between eighty to hundred hours a week. Yeah. And I reckon the SAFL coaches are somewhere between seventy and eighty. Yeah, probably that, right. That's about right. Isn't yeah. It? yeah. Yeah. No, you're probably right. I mean, I probably get lucky because my kids are a little bit older. So you know, I drop them at school in the morning. So I get about a half an hour drive, which is my yeah, phone call time or thinking time. Yep. Um, and the same on the way home. But, yeah, you're probably right. It is up around those hours. I mean, you get the phone calls from a player who's sick or whatever outside of footy is going on. You get those phone calls late at night or on the weekends. And, yeah, it probably does that up in the end. But, um, yeah, I love it. I love it. I really enjoy it. It's yeah. a great lifestyle. Like the balance, the work-life balance for me is really good. Yeah, that's really interesting. That's a good point you make about, you know, the, the, the hours that people don't think about. Yep. On the way here today, mate, did you actually have anything in mind? Were you thinking about... This interview, not at all. Any no. player? <laughs> were you thinking about games? Or were you thinking about... Uh, yeah, I was thinking about a player, actually. There you go. I, I was meant to catch up this morning, but I had to shuffle a couple of things around. And yeah. then, um, so we organised the, you know, to meet tomorrow. But I was just thinking about his game on the weekend. He played in the reserves. Yeah. Uh, I was catching up with him with a review. Um, yeah. And he actually played really well on the weekend. So I was just sort of... I actually rang him um, yeah. and had a quick chat with him and just said, I'll catch up here tomorrow um, yeah. just to sort of reinforce he was going really well and everything was good. So, yeah, it, it does. It adds <laughs> there up. It is. That's exactly yeah, what you're up. talking anyway, about. Hey, yeah. mate, your game, uh, you played in pre-season, gave a little bit of a touch-up. Uh, some of that obviously gives you confidence going into the game. You're expecting their style of game to be what? Um, better than when we played in the Yeah, better one. when you played um, yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, I think they've definitely improved. A new coach is always going to take some time to get going, but, um, yeah, they're a high-scoring team. They've got a really good forward line, so I'm expecting, a, a, I guess, 
they'll want to win the contest and get it forward to their forwards, and um, which we were really good at round one. We won the contest and got it out forward. So it's going to be a really contested game, I think, and yeah. whoever can win that battle will go a long way to winning the game. Hey, mate, I know you're a busy man. appreciate you giving us good some time. Good on you, You need to get down the bay on Monday. If you're a Sturt supporter, get behind your team. They're playing some great footy. Coach is doing a ripping job. Glenelg up for the challenge. It will be a belter of a game at Glenelg on Monday. Stay with us. Still a bit more to come.